Welcome to Valley Mobile Automotive. It is freezing out, so we're going to make this repair as quick as possible. We're doing spark plugs. Hey, get out of the way. We're doing spark plugs on a 2003 Kia Sedona. Look at that. Right now, it is 33 degrees. Like most transverse V6s, the front three are going to be gravy. It's the back three that are going to be the challenge. They're under the intake manifold. I'm going to whip the front three out first real quick. So the electrical connectors come off, the spark plug wires come off, and there's 10 millimeter bolts holding the coils on. And we'll pop those off. It's kind of an interesting system. It's a waste spark system. These front three have coil on plugs, but that same coil has a spark plug wire that goes to the back. That's how easy the front are. Always hand thread them in. Now let's tackle the back. So with the intake manifold, my goal isn't necessarily to get the manifold all the way out. It's just to get it up and out of the way so I can get to those back three. So right away, I'm gonna just start pulling off the peripherals. I can either unplug it or just pull off the bracket. I'll probably just pull off the bracket for those, unplug that, unplug that, uh, any hoses and stuff, just out of the way. And then we'll get these main bolts off and then see what else is holding it down. I know there'll be little support brackets on the back. I won't be able to film it, but you'll be able to feel uh, bolts. I think there's two brackets and they're just support brackets bolted onto the manifold. So let me get the peripherals out of the way. I'll feel for those. I'll get you the size. I believe they're probably a 14 mil, maybe a 12, but I'll let you know. Let's get cracking. Kind of a pain to get to the back ones. They are 12 millimeter. My long ratchet just wasn't good, so having actually something a little stubbier is better. Let's see if I can get my electric ratchet back there. No, no way. Ratcheting wrench, that was the ticket. So now I'm going to pull off the main bolts. They're 12 millimeter. There's seven of them all together. I'm going to pull this bracket off so I can get behind it to those three. Well, I can't find my magnet, but to get those two nuts on the ends, usually you can just have a telescoping magnet pull them up. I can't find mine. So there's a couple of hoses here. One goes to your fuel pressure regulator. The other... Uh, it kind of comes under here. So I don't know everything you need to pull off. I'm going to pull off my fuel pressure regulator hose. Um, I'm actually just going to pull it off from the pressure regulator. Um, I'm going to pull this hose off, but it may not have to come off because if all we're doing is just pulling it up and over, uh, this hose may be okay. Uh, I'm going to pull this off just so the air box housing and stuff isn't going to mess with anything. I can pull it off here. It looks like it's practically partially off so that'll be easy probably didn't even have to pull that off but just looking around seeing what else needs to come off this is loose and ready ready to go we just want to make sure that everything that it may hang up on is out of the way all right so you can see we got perfect access one two three and this didn't have to come all the way off the vehicle. There's still a lot of things connected over here. One thing I had to disconnect was the throttle body. I believe this is the throttle position sensor. Not quite sure, but it's on the throttle body in the back. Left this hose on, left most of everything over there on. You just have to you know, feel for it what comes off or what needs to come off. The uh, intake boot came off. These are the brackets in the back that you're feeling for. So there's two on this side. And then one there and then one there 
So a total of four bolts in the back. And that's it. One thing to keep in mind when you pull this off, these end, these are nuts, not bolts. And there's a washer under there. So one thing you want to just be careful of is pull that washer off before you try to move the intake because you can get them to drop on accident inside one of these ports and that could prove to be pretty bad. And with that said, while we have this off, we're gonna just go ahead and drape a towel over the top of these ports here so nothing accidentally gets launched inside. So from this point, pretty much it's similar to the front. We'll pull these boots off and we are replacing the spark plug cables as well. And we'll just do those one at a time. That way we don't have to worry about routing. We just pull one off and then match it up with the same length of the new one and route it exactly in the same place. So that'll be pretty easy to do. Sometimes you have to twist these and then pull. Ugh. Hey, cool, the new ones are numbered, so that helps. So how the numbers work on the back, the spark plug closest to the passenger side is number one, and then three, and then the one closest to the driver's side is number five, so one, three, five. I forgot I was gonna put a rag under this. Some of these harness looms are pretty brittle. You get a lot of loom debris, loom debris. You can put a little silicone paste in the tip of these. That'll just help lubricate it so they come off in the future. All right, that's all of them in the back. So I'm gonna put the front coils on right now before putting my intake back on, just in case I need to readjust or do anything with my spark plug wires. I have plenty of room and access to do it with. We'll do the same thing with these, just a little silicone paste on the tip. Doesn't take too much. Just so you know what I mean by silicone paste. All right, now we're ready to slap it all back together. Pretty much just uh, in reverse. We'll pull this out. We want to just make sure our surface is clean. Then we lay this back over. Before we do anything with these front bolts, we'll go ahead and put our back bolts in. That way we can move this up and down and around if we need to line up our bolt holes. This far one was also holding up a wiring harness, so don't forget that. So now we can put our front bolts in. Okay, so for those back ones, we just wanna get them started. We don't wanna tighten them down yet. Just get them in there, then we'll come to the front, tighten those down, then we'll tighten the back down. So these bolts are tightened to 15 to 22 foot-pounds. Fun fact for you, this is not an intake manifold, but in fact, it's a surge tank. All right, now we can tighten those back bolts down and then go around and start connecting everything back up. All right, I think that's it. I'm just gonna go around, double check everything. Fire it up. All right, there you go. That is spark plugs on a Kia Sedona. Really not too bad. 
I think the manual makes it look a little more intimidating than it really is. Book time is three and a half hours on this, but we got it done in right around two, and that's with filming. Getting to the front three, easy peasy. The back three, that's a little more challenging, but really not too bad. Just pulling off a few things on that intake, and then we don't have to pull the intake completely out. We just move it out of the way enough. Just two things to keep in mind. I think I mentioned them in the video, but just to reiterate, we don't want anything to fall into those intake ports. So just having a rag over the top of it, that'll prevent anything from falling in. And then also those two end nuts on the upper manifold, they are washers underneath them. So we wanna pull those off before removing the manifold because those can fall in uh, and cause a lot of trouble. So other than that, you got this. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. See you on the next one.